OK, so we're going to solve this equation where we need to find all complex numbers z which satisfy the equation. So now this is the geometric problem, so we'll start by drawing a picture, just get a feel for what the argument of z plus and minus 1 actually look like. So if we have our argand diagram, we can draw on the points 1 and negative 1 down here. And let's imagine we've got a point, we'll just say that its imaginary part is positive, so z could go up here. If we had the point z plus 1, it would just move 1 over to the right, and z minus 1 would move 1 unit over to the left. But then you can spot here, actually, the argument of z minus 1. It can help to think of z plus 1 and z minus 1 actually as vectors rather than as points in complex space. So here, going from the origin to z minus 1 is actually the same as going from 1 to z. So you can see that this vector going from 1 to z is the same as the journey going from the origin to z minus 1. So actually we can just label on here, this angle here is going to be the argument of z minus 1. And then similarly, going from minus 1 to z, this vector corresponds to going from the origin to z plus 1. It's the same journey there. So we can once again label the argument, or this angle here is going to be the argument of z plus 1. So we'll just label argument z plus 1 for this angle here. So this is now quite useful because we've worked out, although this all depends on z being in the upper half plane in the top half of the picture, we've worked out some quite useful information. And we'll deal with the case where z is in the bottom half of the picture afterwards. So now we've got a picture with a triangle in. So if I just copy out this triangle, and you can see this would work actually regardless of where our point z is, as long as it's in the top half of our plane. So we could have z over on the left, for example, but we would still have our arguments would still be effectively the same angles on the picture. They'd just be different sizes. So copying out this triangle, we've got this angle here is the argument of z plus 1. And then this angle inside the triangle, we can just do 180 degrees minus the argument of z minus 1. Or we'll use radians, so pi radians is 180 degrees. So this is pi minus the argument of z minus 1. Then we'll be interested in finding what this angle here is. So I'll just label this as theta, because then this can tell us about which points z can be if we know about what angle it makes with the points minus 1 and 1 on our picture. So just using the simple fact that the sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, or pi radians, we can add all of this up. So we have the argument of z plus 1 plus pi minus the argument of z minus 1 plus theta. This has got to be equal to 180 degrees, or pi radians, where we just add the three angles together. So then you can see a pi cancels on each side. Then we can rearrange to get theta is going to be equal to the argument of z minus 1 minus the argument of z plus 1. But don't forget, this was our original equation. So if we were to actually subtract argument of z plus 1 from both sides, you'd see that the argument of z minus 1 minus the argument of z plus 1 is just going to be pi over 2. So this tells us then that theta has got to be pi over 2 radians. So how does this actually help? Well, now that we know this angle, we can start to draw some points which have this angle as pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. So if we just sketch our argand diagram once again, we've got positive 1 and negative 1. We could draw a point, for example, around here. This would make a 90 degree angle. Or we could go up to here. We could form a 90 degree angle between these two. And you could also put some points in here and here. And you start to see that it's going to form a curve to set all of these points which have a pi over 2 radian angle there. And this actually relates to a classic circle theorem. So this is the one where you have the angle in a semicircle is always 90 degrees. But actually the reverse is also true. If you have the set of points which form a 90 degree angle with a given line segment. So here our line segment that we'd be interested in would be the one between positive and negative 1. So if we have the set of all points which form a 90 degree angle with this line segment, this is going to be a semicircle with this line segment as our diameter. So we actually get this whole semicircle. So every point on this semicircle forms a 90 degree angle with our positive and negative 1. If we were to take some points that were further up, then the angle would be too small. And if we were to take them inside the semicircle, our angle would be too big. So we can characterize our solution then, at least where the imaginary part of z is greater than 0. We can draw this 
We can't include positive and negative 1 because the imaginary part is equal to 0. We'll need to consider that separately. But we do have this semicircle now in the upper half plane where all of our points where the imaginary part of z is greater than 0. And this forms, it's actually going to be a unit circle. You can see the diameter is 2, so the radius is going to be 1. And it's going to be centred at the origin. So we can say the imaginary part of z is greater than 0 and the modulus of z is equal to 1. And this will characterise our set of all of our solutions, at least where the imaginary part is greater than 0. So now we'll consider the cases where the imaginary part is less than or equal to 0. So first of all, when the imaginary part of z is equal to 0, it's natural for us to try and extend this semicircle round and try the points z is 1 and z is negative 1. But unfortunately we run into problems with the argument of z minus 1 and the argument of z plus 1. So when z is equal to 1, the argument of z minus 1 is the argument of 0. And the argument of 0 typically isn't well defined, we don't have a value there. And similarly we run into problems when z is minus 1, the argument of z plus 1 is the argument of 0, which again isn't well defined. So our equation actually just isn't well defined when z is plus or minus 1. So it certainly doesn't have any solutions there. So what about other values of z where the imaginary part's equal to 0? Well, if the imaginary part's equal to 0, then this tells us that z has got to be a real number. And this is useful because it tells us that z plus or minus 1 has also got to be a real number. So now this is useful because we actually know a lot about the argument of z plus or minus 1, given that they're real numbers. So if you've got any real number, first of all, if you've got a positive real number, so we're on this line here, you can see that the argument is just going to be equal to 0. And if you have a negative real number, we use the convention that the argument is equal to pi rather than negative pi there. So this tells us then that the argument of z minus 1 and the argument of z plus 1, they're either going to be equal to 0 or pi. And there's no way that we can, using 0 and pi, make the argument of z minus 1 if we subtract the argument of z plus 1. This is supposed to be equal to pi over 2, but there's no way we can do this just using pi and 0. So this rules out all the other possibilities then where the imaginary part of z is equal to 0. So there are no real solutions to this equation. Now when the imaginary part of z is negative, we can try and extend this circle round underneath the real axis again. So here, if we draw a sketch, we've got our points at 1 and negative 1, and let's try just a point z here so we form a 90 degree angle, we're on the bottom half of this circle now. So you can just see, looking at this, that the arguments, while there is going to be a difference of 90 degrees, the argument of any complex number with a negative imaginary part, so below this real axis, the arguments are going to be negative. So here we've got the argument of z minus 1 does look like it's going to be pi over 2 more than the argument of z plus 1. But we run into problems because these are actually negative, so this is a larger, its modulus is larger, but it's actually a smaller number. So these would solve the equation the argument of z minus 1, it wouldn't be equal to the argument of z plus 1 plus pi over 2. It would be equal to the argument of z plus 1 minus pi over 2. So we need to make it more negative to get round to the argument of z minus 1. So unfortunately, none of these points on the lower half of this circle satisfy our equation. So can we rule out any points in the lower half where the imaginary part of z is less than 0? It doesn't look very promising if we draw a sketch of just, let's say we've taken our points 1 and negative 1 and we take a point z over here, you can just see looking at the picture that actually the argument for z minus 1 is always going to be a larger looking angle than the argument for z plus 1, but the fact that it looks larger means that it's actually a smaller angle. So this could cause us some problems because you'd have the argument of z minus 1 because it's a larger negative number. This is actually less than the argument of z plus 1. And this is a problem because the argument of z plus 1 is less than the argument of z plus 1 plus pi over 2. So you can see that the argument of z minus 1 being less than the argument of z plus 1 plus pi over 2, this wouldn't be able to satisfy our equation in this scenario. And we get the same sort of problem wherever we draw our point z in the lower half of the complex plane. So we have z somewhere in between 1 and negative 1. We get the same issues here that 
the argument is going to be smaller for z minus 1 than it is for z plus 1. So it looks like a larger angle, but it's negative, so it's actually smaller. And similarly, if we were to take, let's take z over on the left, to the left of negative 1, we would get the same sort of picture. You can just see pictorially that this isn't really going to work, that this argument here is going to be less than the argument here because it's actually a slightly larger angle being negative. So this doesn't really work as a rigorous proof, but just pictorially we can see it doesn't look like there's going to be any more solutions. So we'll finish just by doing this a little bit more rigorously now. So to see why there are no solutions, we'll start off by considering z as a plus b times i, where a and b are the real part and imaginary part, respectively. So in this situation, we know that b is negative, and we'll actually first just consider the case where a is strictly greater than 1. So just on our picture, what does this look like? We've got 1, we've got minus 1, as usual. With a being greater than 1, this just means that z is somewhere over to the right of 1. So we need to consider some of these cases separately because you get slightly different behaviour with the argument depending on the position of z in each of these quadrants. So you can see that our argument of z minus 1 here will form a triangle and the argument of z plus 1 there will form a different triangle. So let's just copy out each of these triangles. We've got the length along here is going to be a minus 1 for z minus 1 and we're going down b here so this is our small triangle for the argument of z minus 1, and our more stretched out triangle will have a plus 1, and we'll have b going down again there. And this can help us to calculate the argument of z plus 1. So actually, just starting from the simple fact that a minus 1 is less than a plus 1, we'll be able to see to do with arctan of b over a minus 1 and arctan of b over a plus 1, we'll be able to see that one of them has a larger argument than the other. So just taking reciprocals, this is going to reverse the sign of the inequality. 1 over a minus 1 is now greater than 1 over a plus 1. And then if we multiply by b, remember that b is negative, so this is actually going to reverse the sign of the inequality again. Now arctan is an increasing function, so this, if we take arctan of both sides, this will preserve the inequality. So arctan of b over a minus 1 is less than arctan of b over a plus 1. And of course, arctan of b over a minus 1 is actually just this angle, but it will be negative because b is negative. So this is the argument of z minus 1. So you can say that the argument of z minus 1 is less than the argument of z plus 1. So here, arctan of b over a plus 1 gives us the argument of z plus 1. So now we can see that the argument of z minus 1 is less than the argument of z plus 1, so there's no way we need the argument of z minus 1 actually to be bigger than the argument of z plus 1. So we've ruled out all of the solutions here where a is greater than 1. So now for the case where a is less than or equal to 1, we could again show that the argument of z minus 1 is less than the argument of z plus 1, which would mean there's no solutions. But there's a different method that we'll use here. So actually, because we've got a less than or equal to 1, on our picture, once again with negative 1 and 1, this means that z is underneath the real axis and it's somewhere to the left of 1. So this tells us that the argument is going to be, we think of it just as an angle to begin with, the angle has got to be at least pi over 2 radians, at least 90 degrees, or even more if we move further to the left. But then turning this into an argument, remember that this argument here is the argument of z minus 1. So this is telling us that the argument of z minus 1, while the angle is greater than or equal to pi over 2, the argument is less than or equal to negative pi over 2. And this is really useful because if we think about the argument of z plus 1, this has got to be somewhere between pi and negative pi, not including negative pi. But we actually run into problems here if we Let's rearrange this equation so you would be interested in the argument of z minus 1 minus pi over 2. This is supposed to be equal to the argument of z plus 1. So following our logic here, this is less than or equal to minus pi over 2 minus another pi over 2. So it's less than or equal to negative pi. But the argument of z minus 1 minus pi over 2 is also supposed to be equal to the argument of z plus 1. So we're saying that the argument of z 
plus 1 is less than or equal to negative pi. But this is impossible because the argument of any complex number is always defined to be less than or equal to pi or strictly greater than negative pi. So there's actually no solutions then in the lower half of the complex plane. We've ruled out all of the different possibilities. We can't have an argument less than or equal to negative pi. So the only valid solutions to our original equation then are these points on the semicircle where we don't include negative 1 and positive 1. 